Hello there and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I created the Yo Sacro logo with an Adobe Illustrator. The reason for creating the video is that most people who saw me while I was working on the logo asked me loads of questions about what kind of tools and techniques I was using. So I finally decided that it's better to have a video which might help other people who have similar questions. So. Uh, this video I'm breaking it down into two sections. The first section explains the different uh, design ideas which ben went behind the logo itself and in the second section I'm going to show you how I created it actually in Illustrator. So let's get started. Now coming to the actual design of the logo itself there are many things which I have to consider like uh, the logo has to be easy to remember the logo has to be easy to associate, the logo has to be bold, it has to be scalable and obviously the logo has to be practical. So uh, after going through loads of revisions I finally came up with this logo. Now the entire logo was pretty much designed on paper so I'm not going to go ahead and show you all the steps which I took and uh, all the things which I had to do to get to this level. So instead let me go ahead and directly show you the different measurements which I had to go through. Now what you see on the screen is basically all the mats which is behind the design of this logo. Now uh, first step I basically use uh, 18 grid on the width and uh, 10 grid on the height so it's 18 cross 10 grid and within this grid I have two main circles so I have one circle here and another circle here and both of these have other inner circles which basically give you the tube like appearance. Now once I have this, I basically use the two width as my default. So here I have cut out this one particular circle at this level and also this particular circle is cut out and it's coming down and it's also having the same second width. Now a couple of main things which I had to consider while doing this are basically the different measurements which I have to use while this bends and such. So let's look at that. Now, when this angle starts, this one I wanted it to be 60 degrees, right? So this angle is supposed to be 60 degrees from the origin or the actual horizontal axis. So that had to be taken care of. Next, apart from that, as you can see, this circle which you can see here is actually the curvature of this line here at the bottom. So I wanted this curvature and that is exactly one unit radius of this circle. So that is what this is showing you here. Apart from that, I have this outer circle which is giving me the radius here. So this circle is giving me the radius of the bend over here at the bottom. So I had to take care of that too. So uh, basically in Illustrator I'm going to show you how I'm going to put in all these measurements to get that result. Also as you can see here this line which is going here at the bottom and this section at the bottom have a little bit of gap between them. So I'm going to go about and show you exactly how you can increase such gaps and have such um, um, uh, let's say um, additional excludes which are coming out of the surface itself and use simple masking to get that detail. So uh, the uh, math is pretty obvious if you just observe the different measurements. I've put in all these small circles which uh, give you loads of details. Now also another thing to note here as you can see uh, the actual measurements show you that the space between the logos uh, or the gap over here present between the two loops is actually pretty small. It's actually one fourth the unit. As you can see this is one fourth of the unit whereas on the actual logo itself there is a lot more gap. The reason for this is when the logo becomes small you can see that this gap will start getting closed. So therefore when the logo gets smaller I wanted a practical approach which will increase the gap therefore easy uh, making it easier for people to know that okay there is an actual loop over there. So these are pretty much all the considerations you had to take care of while I designed the logo. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how it was built. Okay, so now to creating the actual logo in Illustrator, what I'm going to do is first explain which object I'm going to create. I'm going to tell you what is my reasoning behind or what are my steps to go about creating it and then show how I created it. Right. So to first begin with, let me go ahead and create a new document and set up some basic things. As you can see, I need my grid setup where I have this 10 cross 18 grid and uh, this is the same ratio for the canvas and this is where I'm going to create my logo. So this is what I want to first set up. So let me go create a new document 
and here while creating let me just give it a name and right now the unit is in pixels so I can keep it as it is uh, next I only want to make sure that the width and height are in the right ratio which is 18 is to 10 so yes it's at 180 cross 100 so that's perfect so let me go ahead and create that now once I have this document created next step is to go ahead and turn on my grid so I'll just go turn on show grid and when I do that you can see there is this uh, very awfully huge grid which is created so I need to go ahead and edit it so as you know the height is 100 units and the width is 180 units so basically I, uh, uh, wherever I see I want the grid units every 10 pixels so I can go to edit preferences grids, grids and gra guides and over here I'll just tell grid line every 100 and this is basically what I want but you can see that it has subgrid lines which I don't really need so let me go ahead and get rid of that the subdivisions I'll just set it to one okay done so this is basically I have what I have I have 10 units going across uh, on the top to bottom and I have 18 units going across so this is the first step now the next thing is if I go ahead and create any objects in here you can see it doesn't really snap to the grid itself so that's kind of an issue for me I can go to view turn on snap to grid and now when I try to create something you can see it snaps exactly to the grid which is awesome so that's the next step now also if I go ahead and try to create an object here you can see here that Illustrator automatically goes and snaps the outline to the corner of the grid whereas I actually want the fill of the object to be snapped to the grid itself so if I remove the outline and give it a fill value you can see that the object is not snapping to the grid so it kind of messes up with my mats so that's why I don't want any of the objects which I create to have any outlines or strokes so therefore objects have no strokes and they have any particular color fill which you like okay so let me just give it blue okay so this is what I have now so now my file is ready so let me see exactly which object I want to start with so as you see here I have this and this object here this is nothing but the entire circular section so basically what I want is to create these loops so I want two of these loops created so let me go ahead and finish that up so to create them I'll take the ellipse tool and starting here at the top I'm snapping them exactly and creating it over here so as you can see the position of this ellipse is exactly given it's starting at the origin uh, 0 0 and it's exactly 100 pixels you have to make sure you look at whether or not this is at exactly 100 pixels because sometimes when you when you're trying to create it the initial point might be a bit off and therefore you might get a decimal value like uh, 0.05 and such so you have to make sure you're always looking at the transform values okay so I have this object created next I want to create the object inside it so for that I'll just go ahead and create from here I'll just change the color for this so I know exactly these two are the ones I'll just see whether or not the values are correct yes they are I'll go trim and I have this loop ready so basically that's one step done now I have this loop ready but as you can see I want to cut it down at the bottom over here and also at the top it's cut down at a different angle right so the top portion and the bottom portion both have certain trims applied not only that this loop which I have here on the side has a certain trim applied to this edge and it has a different edit which is being done on the top so basically whichever loop I have I have the top and the bottom portion completely separated out so I want to just go ahead and separate the top and bottom portion right here so to do that I'll just go take a line tool I'll go ahead create a line starting at this grid point and I'll just set it to zero degrees oops zero degrees so basically it's going to go across this way and I'm giving it a thousand pixels so when I create it it's going to create a long line which is going across I don't really care about the length of the line now all I want to make sure that this that this line which I created is exactly at 50 pixels which is half of this uh, actual canvas and as you can see if I let go of the outline I can't really see it so if I want to be able to see all the outlines I can go press Control Y on the keyboard it get, takes me to the outline mode where I can see all the outlines uh, there should be a shortcut here yes so you have the shortcut here preview and outline Control Y now to get this half portion cut out all I have to do is select these two objects and I'll just go tell divide and when I do that it creates a group for me 
and this group pretty much has all the parts inside it I'll just go ungroup this and remove the parts which I don't really care about okay so once I remove them I have the top portion and the bottom portion separated out right so uh, whatever I have created now I can go ahead and duplicate that onto the side so for duplication I'll just go ahead use alt click and drag along with shift so that it intersects over there at the edge and it's done I just had to make sure that the X and Y values for transforms are exact so this is pretty much done now next step is if I come through here you'll see that this loop is supposed to flow through into the next loop and whatever trim I apply here is basically uh, applied to both of these let me explain it a little bit better so here I have this loop which is flowing through and it's supposed to go in at the bottom and now this loop which is going here at the top is basically cutting it over here so what I want is this loop and this loop to be a single object because both of them have the same thing applied so I don't want to do the same operations multiple times so therefore I'm just going to go ahead and merge them together right so here I'll select this and this loop I'll go weld them together so I have a single loop okay so this one is done I have a bottom portion here and a top portion here perfect now let's see what exactly is the next step now as you can see here the bottom portion of this loop is completely cut out it's not going to extend completely so therefore I want the bottom portion of this also being cut out so let me pull this up so you can see what's happening so now I want this cut out here so to get that cut I'll take a rectangle tool I'll create the rectangle so it exactly stops there to create that cut for me and now I can go ahead and directly use a pathfinder and I have this cut so perfect I have this portion completed I pretty much have this portion completed it only has that uh, detail to be added in over there now now here comes the tricky portion I need to add in the section which comes down from this uh, upper portion here from the upper loop now to create this I'm going to make use of the line tool okay so I'm going to create this line here which you can see let me increase the size so you can see better okay so I need to create this line and as you can see this line is going across and as I had said this is supposed to be 60 degrees so let me just explain a bit of the maths here as you know I explained that this angle here is supposed to be 60 degrees so this is 60 degrees so this is supposed to be 60 degrees and now I want a line which is actually going across in this way so basically I have a line which is going here and now this line is supposed to be exactly 90 degrees to the 60 degrees so basically I have a line which is going across 60 degrees first and then I wanted to rotate again another 90 degrees so basically 60 plus 90 that's basically 150 degrees so this line which I have here is going to be 150 degrees in total right so all I'm going to do is create a line from this point and this line is going to be 150 degrees uh, this is just basic geometry uh, the it's quite logical if you just observe it so I'm not getting too deep into it if you're getting confused just relax and just go through it once more so I just need to create a line which is at 150 degrees so coming back in here I'll go ahead take the line tool and because I have my grid snapping already turned on I can come back here and click here exactly in the center and now I have my option to create a line of any length at any angle I'll just go set this length at uh, 1000 well, I don't really care about the actual length and here the angle is supposed to be 150 and I'll create that so as you can see the line is created now I'm not going to apply any strokes to this line but I'm going to select it set the actual reference point at the bottom corner to see whether if it's at the right position I don't care about the width and height because I can't really get the exact values I'll have to calculate them now once I have this line ready what I'm going to do is use this line to slice open this top loop because what I want to do is basically 
have this as a separate portion which is coming outwards right so to get this I need it to be a tangent on the circle so this is the circle I have and this is supposed to be a tangent on the circle so here I'm going to cut out the top portion so I'm going to get this so this is going to be a complete different section and then once I have that portion cut out I'm going to add this portion extra right so this portion is going to be an extra here so this entire section which you see here is going to be an addition so to get that one I'm going to select this line and this if you're unable to select it just go into control Y the outline mode and you can select it and I'm going to go ahead and divide so now once I've divided I have two different objects I'll go ungroup them and this portion I don't really need I can get rid of it so that's deleted perfect so I have this portion completed now what I want is to add this additional section here this portion which is supposed to come at the bottom so I basically want this portion extended so for this what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to keep it here so basically this rectangle is also supposed to be at 150 degrees so it's something like I'm taking a rectangle which is over here and rotating this 150 degrees in this angle to get it in this position so I'll come back here take a rectangle tool I'll just create a simple rectangle I don't care about the length I've just created this I'll give it a different color oops I don't want a stroke I only want fill okay I'm just going to make sure that the transform values have no uh, errors or mistakes within them and also I'm going to turn off a line to pixel grid because I don't want my transform screwed up now what I want is this object to be rotated from here in the center so for that I'll take the rotate tool using my alt key I'll go take the pivot point and snap it to the center it gives me this options and obviously I want it rotated 60 degrees because I'm starting it already from 90 so I'll just hit OK so I have this object created all I have to do is merge it with the old one so perfect so I have this entire section created now now the next step is to create the other part of the uh, section which is here the base of the E so basically I want this portion the base of the E created so for that let me go ahead and select all these objects I'll go apply a transparency on them so that I can't I can still work now to create this I'll just go ahead and create them I'm not going to explain a lot here okay done so I have the base of the E created and I have this portion created too so now the next step is to get the actual circles here which can give me the um, uh, smoothness so basically what I'm looking for is this circle so you can see this has a larger circle over here and a smaller circle over here so how exactly do I get that now to get this circle I basically need this exact point from where I have to create it so as you know if you have a circle if you create tangents on that circle they're always going to meet at some point and this circle is going to always be at a 90 degree over here so basically this is what I want so if I have two lines which are intersecting if I create a circle which has these two lines as a tangent I can basically get this so that's what I want to do I want to create this line and this line as a tangent to this circle so I want a line which is going through these two exactly at half the angle upwards right so uh, let me just rephrase that I have a line which is going bot uh, downwards here and I have another line going horizontally here I want another line which is exactly bisecting them or going exactly halfway in the angle between these two so that when it meets it over here at this grid line I can create this circle so to create this I'm going to make use of this line which I had created previously you can see this was the line which is created from this point so using this line if I create a line which is half the angle it will come exactly on this line so what exactly is my process here now if I create a line from here you know that this is supposed to be 150 degrees but if I consider that line from this point 
So from this horizontal section, uh, this is going to be nothing but one minus 30 degrees. So if this is a minus 30 degrees, then this is another minus 30 degrees. And as you know, the entire 360 degree angle it forms a circle. So from 360, I want to subtract 2 times 30 and basically 300 degrees. So I want a 300 degree angle coming till here. So it starts here, ends here. So this line is 300 degrees from this point over here at the top. So let me come back here. I'll go ahead take the same line tool from here in the center I'll click and this gives me 150 degrees perfect I have a line which is going towards the top now I want to start another line which is exactly starting here but if I click you can see that it creates a line which is going somewhere halfway the reason for this is because grid snapping is on I'm going to turn off grid snapping and I'm also going to turn create a grid line I'm creating a grid line and putting it over here so now when I take my mouse here you can see that there is an intersection point clicking here I can now create anything I want okay so I don't want the length to be one pixel I want it to be let's say a uh, hundred pixels and the angle as you know is 300 degrees I'll hit OK so as you can see the line is being created and it is coming exactly to the center over here so that's what I want uh, there is a special line created there I'll just delete that okay so I have this line which is coming here at the bottom now what I want to do is draw the circle to do that I'll create another grid line which is going to come and snap here so now if I come back to my outline view you can see I have this point where both of these are intersecting this time if I go ahead and create a circle from this intersection point and stop it exactly at this intersection you can see it touches the line here and it touches the line here so that's exactly what I'm looking for so I can go ahead and create another circle which is going to intersect this path at the bottom so you can see it intersects here and here at the bottom so perfect I have pretty much everything done all I have to do is uh, I'll go ahead and uh, trim and weld these things properly so I'll just go ahead apply a uh, few colors on these objects so I can see them a bit better okay so first step you can see that these objects which are created have been extended a lot I don't really want them extended so now I can go ahead get rid of the unnecessary lens so I'll go trim this off okay so similarly this object has also come out so I don't really that want that out so I can go get this and trim this off okay perfect so I have these two objects which I can basically merge together now so let me go ahead and merge them so now I have this object but it does not have a smooth corner at the bottom uh, there are a couple of scripts you can find down online which can go ahead and directly create smoothness values for you I really am a traditionalist I like this method so I'm going to stick with it okay so I'm just reducing the opacity so I can see exactly what's happening now now to create the smoothness what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another circle which is going to start exactly from this point the corner point of this and this circle is basically going to extend exactly till the intersection point or the anchor point here now the reason I've created this way is now if I cut these off together trim them you can see it creates this circle which is exactly starting and stopping where the smoothness is supposed to be so using this I'm going to go ahead and trim oops uh, it has to be in reverse so this one goes on the top and trim so as you can see it immediately created this curvature for me okay that one is one step next step the final one here you can see I need to add in some extra details I can't really lose it so the one of the easiest ways to get this done is actually go ahead use the pen tool increase some uh, and do such but I like my method I'll go create a circle here I'll go snap it to the anchor point there and I can go about this on the top trim these 
So now I have a circle which has the exact value of that curvature. I can go ahead and merge that with the final. Perfect. I have all these items pretty much done now. So all these curvature values are done and I have this loop coming downwards. So pretty much all these are done. Now the final step is to create this separation between these two objects. So what I have is this separation which I want to create. So this is quite easy to uh, get started with. So as you can see I have this object which is passing through. All I need to do is extend this and use that to trim out the values of this object. So to do that I'll just take this object, I'll copy it and on this object I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. So in this mask I can use my Alt key to click and go into it. I'll go ahead and add a complete white mask to begin with because I want the entire object to be visible first. If I come out you can see the object is visible. Now if I go back into the mask and add any object which is black in color and come out you can see this is invisible now. So I can go ahead and move this object and you can see this object goes invisible. I'm not trimming, I'm not doing anything special, it automatically does it for me. So now what I'll do is within the mask I'm going to paste in this loop which I have and I'm going to just give it a black color. So coming out of it, if I turn this off you can see that it's automatically created this gap for me. So to get the actual separation in the gap what I will do is going in here taking this object I can go ahead and just use the stroke value on this object. So let's say I want a stroke of about uh, 10 pixels. As soon as I do that you can see there is a new stroke applied of 10 pixels and if I come out there is a gap which is created. Now obviously I don't want this to cut off anything over here at the sides. So as you can see here it's extending the outline even here. I don't really want that so I can go ahead and remove any unnecessary sections of this. So for that let me go ahead and create this object. I'll use it to trim this away. Okay done. And now I basically have this outline which is doing it. But as you can see there is this slight kink. This is because of the trimming which we have done. So to get rid of this all I need to do is go into the stroke and I'll just tell I want it smoothed out. So basically all those kinks are removed. Coming out, basically have this now. I can go ahead select the object which I have. Okay, I can select the object which I have, change the amount of stroke I have and immediately I can change the amount of gaps. Okay, let's set it that a little bit. That's unnecessary. Okay. Okay, so now if you want to edit this value, you can just go ahead and edit the weight. So let's say I want a five point weight, and immediately I have the five point value inside. Perfect. So now if I go ahead and apply a single color to all these objects without any opacity. Oops, I don't want the stroke, I want it to be on the fill. Okay, so pretty much my entire logo is done. Now what I can do is come back and get rid of all the parts which I didn't really need. And also if you want to finalize and you don't really want to be using the mask, if you want to export a SVG file or something as such, you can go ahead and release the mask so that you have this object which is taken out this time. And let me go ahead and show you what I'm trying to do. I'll hide all the other objects. Okay. Where is this? Okay, let me just go to the outline view to check. Okay, it's here. Perfect. Okay, it's in the end there. I'll go ahead and ungroup this whole thing. I don't want this part, I'll remove that. So basically what I want now is the object which I have selected. I want this to basically go ahead and trim out this value but I want the outline to be used. So for that I can select any object, I can go to the object panel and over here I can tell, I can tell path outline stroke. So when I do this it basically creates an object which is an outline itself. So it creates paths for the outline. 
and now I can go ahead and choose these object and trim. So now I have a perfectly good logo which I can, which I can go ahead and use anywhere I want. So, so that's it for this video. Uh, this is just going to be a trial release. I'm not going to edit any more on here. And if you have any doubts, suggestions, you can put them in the comments on this video. And I'll see you in another one. Goodbye.